Hi, I'm John, and this is NASA Now. Today we'll see what happens when a small group of scientists and engineers work together to create a revolutionary new robotic lander. Get ready to meet a man who's throttling up the power on the Morpheus Project. That's ahead, but first, here's what's happening at NASA Now. Every day, astronauts aboard the International Space Station are treated to an amazing view. On December 21st, 2011, from the cupola of the ISS, Commander Dan Burbank caught this spectacular footage of Comet Lovejoy soaring 240 miles above the Earth's horizon. From the vantage point of space, it's different than seeing it from planet Earth because there's no intervening atmosphere to see. I would say I probably saw the most amazing thing I have ever seen in space, and that's saying an awful lot because every day is filled with amazing things. There are many amazing discoveries waiting for astronauts in deep space, and we met up with a man who is helping pave the way of future space explorations. The project is Morpheus, and this new spacecraft demonstrates an environmentally friendly propellant propulsion system and autonomous landings with hazard detection technology. Joining us is main engine design engineer Rob Moorhead from the NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Hello, Rob. Why is there a need for a project like Morpheus? Many of the new programs that NASA proposed involve landing a robot or humans on the moon or an asteroid or Mars, but NASA hasn't had a lander type test bed since the Apollo days. So Project Morpheus is the first large lander that NASA's had in, in 40 years, and we're using that to test technologies that are extensible to landing on the moon or landing on Mars. Can you tell us a little more about the Morpheus spacecraft? Project Morpheus is a rocket-powered lander. It has four tanks and it has four legs and it takes off vertically, it flies around and it hovers and lands vertically. It's powered by a 4,200 pound thrust rocket engine and my job responsibility is to design and build that rocket engine. How does a rocket engine work exactly? Rocket engines work by expelling gas at very high rates of speed. It's analogous to a balloon. Uh, a balloon is a very small, self-contained rocket engine. It has a gas inside, that's my, the, my breath, the air trapped inside. It's under pressure because the balloon is squeezing the air. And when I let go of the end, you get thrust out this way. And if I let go of the balloon, it'll fly off into the room. A rocket engine works exactly the same way. So it's the momentum exchange. You know, every force has an equal and opposite reaction. Tell us about the green technology being used. Liquid oxygen and liquid methane are our propellants. Uh, we choose those two propellants because they burn very cleanly. You know, oxygen is O2 and methane is CH4. When you combine those two in a combustion chamber, you get water and carbon dioxide. And, and that's it, there's no, uh, no toxic byproducts. Also an important point about LOX methane is you can produce both of those propellants on the moon or you can produce them on Mars. So who pilots Morpheus? That's a good question. Morpheus pilots itself. Well, Morpheus is a, is, a, is a robotic lander and it knows, it knows where it is and knows where it needs to go and it flies itself. The only command it gets from us is the go command and it, it receives go and it lights its engine and it flies up and it flies over and it lands all by itself. What's the benefit of having it fly and land by itself? You know, our reconnaissance of the moon or of Mars or an asteroid may not be able to detect boulders and craters that would injure a spacecraft or cause it to land at a funny angle. So really we need a system on board that can scan the ground on its own and find its own landing site. How do you test the vehicle to make sure it is safe? First of all, we take the vehicle out and we set it down on the test range here at JSC. And then we lift the vehicle up with a crane and so it's protected. And then we pressurize the tanks with helium, light the engine, and then it lifts off a few feet and it hovers. But the whole time, is it's under protection by the cranes. The first time we flew the vehicle, it went out of control and we had a, a valve that stuck on during ignition and the main engine lit much faster than it was supposed to and the vehicle wasn't ready for that amount of thrust and the vehicle came up the thrust and, and uh, the vehicle lost controls as a result. So we fixed that problem now and now we're flying much more stably. But 
you don't quite know what's going to happen the first time you turn it on. What is the next step for Morpheus? The next step is to rebuild Morpheus into a, a bigger, more efficient vehicle that can test larger experiments. And then the next step after that is repackaging Morpheus into a much lighter vehicle that we can fly to the, fly to the moon or fly to Mars. Just like the Morpheus team, you too can design your own rocket. Check it out. You and your students can learn about rocket science and rocket design using the Engineering a Stable Rocket lesson found on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to visit our Facebook page and leave a comment. We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.